So here we are in FMOD, and I first of all need a new event. If we were to ever use this in a game, it needs to be assigned to a bank. And before we do anything, I'm going to come here and add a parameter. I'm going to call mine RPM. Uh, some games might call it speed uh, or revs or something of that nature. The range of our parameter would have to be in line with the coding of the game. Uh, a lot of games turn this mathematically into an RPM ratio. So regardless of what gear, the RPM will always go between 0 and 1. It doesn't really matter for demonstration purposes here, but I'm going to use a sort of percentile range. So 0 to 100% of the RPM. I'm not trying to be technical with regard to realistic RPM, and that is engine revolutions. Uh, but that'll do, 0 to 100%. So let's start pulling in our files. I have here the idle. To begin with here, I want to stretch them all the way across our 100% RPM range. This is so that we can make sure that they're all in tune with each other before we start deciding when you will hear the low or the medium or the high sample. I'm going to label these up. And for your benefit, I'm also going to color them from sort of cold through to hot. And because we haven't done anything yet, of course, the engine will sound the same at 0 or 100% RPM. Before we do anything else, I need to make sure all of these files are going to loop. There we go. So basically speaking, what we're going to be doing now is using this feature here. If we right click on the pitch of the container, we can add modulation that is an auto pitch modulation. You can only do this within uh, a parameter such as RPM because of course it doesn't work with time. And what this allows us to do is as the RPM increases, the pitch of the sample will increase according to these two controllers that we have here, pitch at zero and root pitch. Now I guess this is real crux of why I decided to do this tutorial. If you just set about tuning your samples and working with these parameters, what I found was that you can often get a little bit lost. By that I mean that you concentrate on getting the low to medium to sound nice. And then when you move over to the medium to high, then of course you may end up changing the parameters of the auto pitch of the medium, which then affects how it transitions from low to medium and so on and so forth. So every change that you make will affect another decision. So it can become quite chaotic quite quickly. So what I want to show you here is a method that I've come up with whereby we tune the range and then we can easily add any new samples, bring them in, tune them up and decide where they go in the RPM range. It took me a while to come up with this method. Uh, there's nothing groundbreaking about it, but I hope it will save you some time. So what we're going to do first of all, I'm going to ignore the idle because the idle isn't actually part of the adaptive engine in terms of the throttle engine. And we're going to start with the lowest RPM right at the bottom here. So we're at zero. Uh, the auto pitch has been turned on. And so the pitch at zero, I'm going to start at one. Now that means, of course, that the pitch right now is the normal pitch of the sample at zero there. And let's have a listen. The question that we're facing right now is what pitch do we want our lowest RPM to be? Do we want it to be lower? than the natural RPM in this loop. So that's the natural RPM. And of course down here, we have very low, very unrealistic sounding engine samples. So how low do we want to go? I think something like 80 is still very much within the realistic range. Uh, and so that's going to be the lowest of our range. Now let's go and have a look at the very highest. If we have a listen to this sample, but if we go all the way up to 100% RPM, and if we turn on the auto pitch facility. So this time, rather than determining what it's going to sound like at zero, which of course is this part, I want to determine what it sounds like at 100. So 
If I choose the root pitch to be 100, then we'll hear the normal pitch of this sample at RPM equals 100. So, now that we're at 100, let's press play. So this time what I'm determining, if I pull this root pitch down, then of course the root pitch will now be at 90, which means above 90 it'll be higher than root pitch. So we're doing the opposite of what we did at the low end. We're trying to find out what is the highest RPM that we want to hear before it starts to sound artificial. So that's root. And up there it sounds like a spaceship. So. So I think that'll do, around about 75, it still sounds natural. And this gives us a sort of headroom of high RPM sound. So here, 75 will be the highest natural sample, and then above that we can push it a bit further with our auto pitch. So this is the highest range. And this is the lowest range. And now we need to tune everything in between. So first up, what I want to do is to get the high RPM of this low sample to be in tune with the high RPM sample at the same range. So if we have a listen to this engine up here, what I'm listening for is a fundamental frequency in that that determines us, that gives us sort of sense of pitch, and I'm going to try and match it with this sample here by adjusting, of course, the root pitch. Now, I hope you can hear that the way I'm hearing it. Um, you're kind of trying to attribute a pitch to a sample that doesn't necessarily have a true fundamental frequency. Um, it's very easy, for instance, to do this, which is to hear this sample. And think that this pitch matches up with this pitch here. Let's have a listen. Now they sound quite similar, but actually they're an octave apart. If you do that, then the, the linear transfer from sort of lowest to highest won't add up. So I just know from experience that we're seeking a higher octave. So that's good enough to start with. We can do micro adjustments later. We're gonna go down to the bottom of the range and do much the same. So this sound, we need to match this one. So it's a lot more difficult to do because we're doing quite extreme pitching. Uh, it's also really loud, so I'm going to turn this one down a bit. What we're going to do is test it at sort of quarter, half, three quarters of the way up. So something isn't quite right here, which is a good thing for demonstration purposes. I think I need to adjust the very height of this. So let's have a listen. Better. That matches up at 75. Sort of at Okay, so I believe those are in tune. We may want to do a slight adjustment.
So I'm pretty happy with that. So just to demonstrate, if I take out the middle one and the idle one's also muted, we could, in theory, simply fade this sample in all the way, fade this sample out all the way, and we should have a fairly comprehensive adaptive vehicle engine. There we are. Not bad for a first stop, but uh, it definitely gets a bit confused here in the middle where the high RPM starts sample sounds strange and the low RPM is being pushed to its pitching limit. See there, doesn't quite add up. If you move quickly from one to the other, you might be able to get away with it, but that's not what we want to be doing. So if I undo those fades, so what we want to do now is tune up the medium to go to join in. Because I have the full range, I'm just tuning it to the lowest and the highest, and it should then be in tune in the middle. I'm finding it easier to tune with the low sample. Need to add auto pitch. Let's check it halfway. So that's not bad at all. Let's just see how that works with the high one. Not bad at all. So what we want to do now is spread these files out such that we're not hearing all three at once. In fact, probably so that we're never really hearing more than two samples. I'm going to save at that point. So if I bring this down to 20, this one say up to 40. Let's just see how this sounds with very basic fade in, fade out. So I'm happy with that transition. Let's have a listen to, let's do the same for this one and see how it sounds. So that's not bad, but we can hear a greater contrast between the two samples. So what I'm gonna do is bring this one over even longer, maybe make it a more gradual fade. getting better but I think we could perhaps elongate this so we could perhaps fiddle with this tweak it a bit mess around with different fades and of course if you can't get a clean transition the next stage would be to go back to the original recording and simply try and pick out something between medium RPM and high RPM in the hope that we can get a smoother transition. For the purposes of this demonstration, I am happy with this RPM range.
One thing we can do to make it a little bit more realistic, you might notice that if with my cursor I jump from one RPM to another, then that's unrealistic. No car can jump like that. So if we click on the RPM parameter, we can change the seek speed here. And I can say determine that if we go for 25 per second, then of course it will take four seconds to do the entire RPM range. Let's see how that sounds. And that's probably up to you and the game designer to determine how fast you want it to go. A little bit faster for my purposes. There we go. By tuning the low and the high extremities, if we were to do the same with any fourth sample, then it would just slot right in and we'd just determine the fade in and fade out values 